Hi, Eric from Arise. I'm excited to show you data sets and experiments, our new workflow for prompt iteration to get reliable, performant, accurate LM outputs. Oftentimes when we update prompts, it feels like we're just guessing. We, we find a new prompting technique on Twitter, we try it out and works well in a few examples. But the reality of AI engineering is that prompting is non-deterministic. It's easy to make a small change and cause performance regressions in your product. We've tailored our product to support evaluation-driven development. You can curate a data set of key points that you're trying to test, run your LM task against those key points, use code or LMs or user-generated annotations to evaluate the output and get aggregate scores across many test runs. This allows you to test as you build. You can connect your prompt changes to your CI CD pipeline and verify experiments before you deploy to customers. Let's take a look at an example AI application. I've built an AI product manager which can try at userstudies.ai. This pitches product solutions for a specific persona and problem statement. Here's an example where I'm using it as a way to validate a product idea for writing song lyrics for musicians. On the right hand side, we have a user researcher conducting a user research interview with a specific AI persona, which is this musician who is trying to write songs. And then on the left hand side, right after the conversation, I'm going to auto generate problem statements product promises, and product features that could be compelling for that problem. Great, let's start auto-filling the product problem. I struggle to overcome writer's block. Generating fresh and unique ideas is challenging. So let's try some product features. So an idea generator, a melody maker, a creative collaborator. And we can even iterate on the product promise as well. Mm, it could be better, it could, and that's why we're using Arise data sets and experiments. Let's auto-generate the persona as well. Let's try to iterate on these prompts using data sets and experiments in Arise. I've curated a data set here, which is a set of personas and problems. Here are the example specific data set variables. Uh, I've included the persona variable here, as well as the problem the persona being aspiring musician and the problem being their struggles with overthinking and writing their lyrics and melodies. On the next tab, you can see the different experiment runs that I've generated. And I've already run six different types of prompt iterations and eval templates to see how I can get to a best in class set of prompts. I can easily compare the experiment runs against each other. So let's look at number six, where I'm going to look at the output of this experiment as well as the score that it gave. So for this first case, for this aspiring musician, it, the promise it, it generated with just these two is the AI songwriting assistant. And why it believes that it could be a compelling feature is that it offers AI-based feedback and suggestions to help you iterate. Uh, and then on the, the evaluator that I ran, ran through a set of different criteria to try to consider whether or not it meets those qualitative criteria. Like, is the promise compelling? Does it actually solve this problem? Would the persona be excited to try it or not? And then, so you can actually compare different sets of experiments against each other. So then you can see how has the output changed as I've changed the prompt. So the first suggested a songwriting inspiration kit, then it suggested instant creativity booster, and then finally, it suggested an AI songwriting assistant. And the, the difficult part of qualitative outputs is that, like we said at the beginning, is that they're not deterministic. It's difficult to, to really judge and create criteria to say which of these product promises is actually better than the other. What's interesting is that you can kind of see the scores go up and down over time. And you, I'm gonna click into here to consider, oh, are the actual scores generated correct? or not. I'm going to add the explanation and label and score. And then so this product promise is uh, fairly, I don't know how to say it, not the best uh, by saying songwriting, songwriting prompts is a good promise. Spark creativity quickly sounds kind of weird. And then it just repeats itself with its explanation, which is kind of like, oh, but it said that it actually passed all the criteria and they gave it a really good score. So there's something wrong with the evaluator that I was using 
to measure the output here. So then I iterated on both the evaluator prompt as well as the, um, the product manager prompt to get to a better output. You can also iterate on your prompts with data sets in the prompt playground. I'll load the data set here. Copy and paste my prompt here. And then you can run it and see the different outputs that it generates. So in this first example, it generates the AI songwriting assistant to effortlessly generate lyrics and melodies. In the second example for a persona who's a Christian who is trying to do more Bible study, the promise is a daily devotional. You can, you can change the model, you can change the inputs, you can change the data set, or you can change the prompt itself. And you can ask Copilot to make tweaks on your behalf. So there's a lot of things that you can do in this environment to iterate on your prompts, both in the UI as well as in code and leveraging AI to help you get to a better AI app. So instead of manually reviewing test cases every time you update the prompt, Arise can do the work instead. You can imagine scaling this up across hundreds of test cases that you run on a CI CD pipeline and not just the ones what we're reviewing here. So let's go into some example code of how to actually get this set up. There's a couple of key concepts you need to know to run an experiment. The first is that you, act, you need a data set of inputs, right? Each of these example points of data is that in those input variables you saw like persona and problem. You need your task defined, which is usually an LLM call or set of LLM calls, which generates a specific outcome you're trying to evaluate. And then you also need to define your evaluation criteria. And once you have those three above, then you can run the experiment, which posts those results in a rise, which you can use to visualize and compare the different scenarios. So let's walk through the code together. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is install a few packages, specifically Arise Phoenix for evaluation and Arise with data sets for this new data sets and experiments feature. We'll add nest async IO so that way there's more parallelism when running evaluations or the different sets of tasks. Next, we're gonna import a set of libraries that are related to data sets that we need to get the space ID and the developer key so that way we can have this Python SDK Arise datasets client. And you can find these keys uh, when you click the code button here and you can see your developer keys, space ID, dataset ID, et cetera. And here I've defined the specific data frame that I want to load into the product. And there's a few different ways to load data sets in the product. You can use CSV upload. Um, you can take your existing traces and then create data sets from that or you can create the, the data points that you have manually in code. Uh, I've created them in code here, so that way I have more granular control over the specific data points of like where the attributes are being stored. Uh, I also wanted to store them here underneath this variable, attributes.lm.promptemplate.variables, which then allows me to load that data set in the prompt playground with those prompt template variables loaded. Another way that you can do that with your existing traces is as long as you are outlining the prompt template variables during your instrumentation as you're running your LM calls, then these will also populate correctly. So you can use two functions. One is the create dataset function and the other is the update dataset function to add data to a specific dataset. So I've already created this in the product that you've seen. So then I will just run this to get the data set, print it, to make sure we're looking at the right one. Uh, I've loaded my OpenAI API key here. And then here's the actual prompt for how I am uh, generating the product promise as well as the explanation. Um, so there's a few things that you can consider in this prompt. Uh, the first is the set of criteria I'm asking it to look at. The second is the few shot examples below here of different product promises. Um, I'm using single serve coffee and hand sanitizer as compelling product promises compared to the existing alternatives of a normal coffee pot and hand soap. And then here is where I load in the specific context of the persona problem. Uh, I'm also using function calling. Uh, you can also use the library instructor to uh, do this without having to manually define the, the tool call. But here is where I want to specifically have structured output around promise and explanation. 
So I'll run each of these blocks. This is just sample code. And then below here, now we're defining our task. We have our open AI client. We have this task, which takes each of those data set rows. And then now you can access the data within the data frame. Uh, I'm taking the prompt template variables, uh, loading the JSON to become a dictionary and getting the problem in persona. So that way I can use it in my GPT task, in my LM call to GPT-4. Oh, so I'm using the prompt above. I'm loading the problem in persona, and then I'm generating the response. I'm returning the string, which is the, the JSON set of arguments that it generated from the tool call that I'm requiring. When you're not using tools, uh, this will be a different output, like messages.content. So within the evaluator code, we have a few different concepts. So the first is I'm defining my custom evaluator, which is using an LM as a judge call. So I'm loading in a persona, a problem, and the output from the product manager above. And then I'm outlining a set of criteria and principles that it needs to follow. First being, is the solution actually different than current alternatives? Is it specific and easy to share? Is it something that the LM believes a persona will be excited to try, that delights the persona and actually solves the problem? And was there an explanation actually included? And then it actually returns a set of labels that I've defined here, right? Because it could either fulfill every criteria, fulfill some of the criteria, fulfill none, or actually cannot determine whether the criteria are satisfied. So within how I set this up is the first, you need to create a class that inherits from the evaluator class above that we've outlined. You give it a name, which is the promise criteria and then a function, which is evaluate, which takes in the output from your LM call or chain, uh, the data set row itself, and then returns an evaluation result. So the steps you have to take is first, if you want to use the prompt variables, you can get them from the data set row and then load them as variables. Next, you need to set up your, your labels or your rails of what do you want the evaluator to output? I've outputted the rails as A through E here. And then the data frame input variables as the output itself, the problem, and the persona. And then I run my evaluation function using LM classify, which is a helper fun function from Arise Phoenix. This data frame I'm loading in here with the custom template using GPT-40, the rails here, and ensuring that it actually provides an explanation on the evaluation. Um, you can also add other parameters here, like if you want to control the temperature or not. And then once you have your evaluate, evaluation data frame, uh, you need to format it in a specific way to output the results for the experiment. So right now I have these five labels, but I need to actually give it a score so that way it knows how to average out the score across the, the test cases. I am using uh, the score of one if it's A or B, and then else zero if it's C, D, or E. And uh, so then I, I create the evaluation result class, I pass in the score, the label, and the explanation, and then now my evaluator is set up. The last thing is actually running the experiment. So I have this data set ID here. I have my experiment with the space ID, data set ID, task, evaluators I've set up, which you can pass in multiple. You can also use arise evaluators, and then the name of the experiment. So I'm gonna give it a new name. I'm gonna hit run. And it's running each of the specific LM calls, as well as the LM classify function across each of those outputs. So you have your data set inputs, you have your LM call, you have your evaluator call, and then you have your full experiment run. So now we can refresh this page and we have our seventh run, which is the data sets and experiments video. And we can go look and see what it outputted and generated. So it looks like it promised a lyric and melody prompt generator. So it provides you fresh ideas to overcome and overthink your creative blocks, which I think it can be compelling. Let's look at the other examples. Um, so this one promises daily Bible lessons for Christians who go to church. This one is proposing a feedback simulation tool. And this one is uh, proposing virtual band software, which is really interesting, but it didn't actually pass the criteria for some reason. So let's let us read why. 
Yeah, so it's saying that this is not different than current alternatives, which could be true, right? You can use GarageBand um, to set up a virtual drummer. Um, you could have it add a virtual pianist and you give it its chords. So maybe there's something to what it's saying in this evaluation criteria. Anyway, I hope you found that a helpful example of what it's like to do evaluation-driven development. In future videos, we'll show you how to generate a golden data set, use annotations as part of your experiment iteration, connect to GitHub CI CD actions, and more. We can't wait to see what you build with data sets and experiments. Happy building.